is going on traders happy wednesday brendan from market makers your home for wyckoff and advanced fibonacci ta guys a join button underneath the video come past your time in these ranging markets in our room getting some education we have a live stream going on right now in harmonics as i'm recording this video love to see you guys in the room and let's talk about price so we had yet another whipsaw in the stock market let's go ahead and look at the nasdaq really quickly here on my screen the nasdaq did exactly what we didn't want it to do because as you guys know bitcoin tracks so closely to the nasdaq remember the dxy i showed you i showed you bitcoin i told you how bitcoin needs to make a range above the wyckoff here get that cut pattern if it doesn't hold the cup it falls back in the range into a wyckoff and then you get volatility okay that's what you get the nasdaq just did that so yesterday we had our nice pump back up after Powell spoke and then we try to hold the base here or the we try to make a base and hold this support level and just capitulate it with this one big down candle okay now the Nasdaq's down I think what three percent what is it down yeah two and a half two two spot seven five percent 340 points the Dow was down 850 points and the SPX was down quite a bit as well what was the reading on that three spot five three percent so how does this affect bitcoin well bitcoin's at 29k right now so let's focus on the crypto now i read one of those hard-hitting articles from one of those crypto news new internet news sites which <laughs> they're so they're so bad but at any rate um the interesting part of it was see these red candles here on the weekly there's seven of them right here okay this is the eighth one right here bitcoin according to this article in its entire history has never had seven weekly red candles and you guys know that watch this channel why that is right why do we have that for the first time in the history of bitcoin it's a pop quiz question well the answer is if you said because we were always trading in the longest bull market in the equities history that's the correct answer now that the equities markets just had six weeks of red in the stocks the first time since 2011 you're starting to hear these numbers are coming up because again we're transitioning from this equities bull market that's been secular the longest in history to a bear market guys that's dragging the market down that's where we're at the SPX is not in a bear market and neither is the Dow the NDX which is the Nasdaq and the Russell which is a lot of tech a lot of high growth they are both in bear markets. So overall, the whole market is not in a bear market, but crypto certainly is as well. So will they get pulled down? I personally think it's a matter of time. I think Powell will keep raising rates to fight inflation until something breaks in the market because this historically has been the precedent the Fed has done every single time. They raise rates until there's real capitulation in the markets and then they try to back off really quick and say, oh, okay, we're done. And that's how you get these big crashes, okay? That's going to happen again in this case. It's almost impossible with a massive economy like the US to know exactly where you should stop exactly what number will help stop inflation and that inflation's embedded and Powell spoke yesterday by the way and it's funny listening to Powell speak if you're if you um, many of you obviously have been in relationships at some point in your life hopefully you're not just staring at a computer all day but when Powell glows about how strong unemployment is right the lowest number for unemployment in like 50 years he has to say that it's like somebody looking you in the eyes and telling you they love you and then cheating on you he has to say that because he has to convince you how strong the economy is because what they're doing has to destroy parts of the economy to slow down the economy to bring down demand which is the only thing the fed can control to which hopefully will bring down inflation now the big argument in the youtube space whether it's deflationary inflationary seems to be can Powell actually bring down inflation or are these high prices always going to be around? And that's really what the concern is here because then you get stagflation. So don't listen to what Powell says, which is what most retail investors do. They say, oh, the Fed's serious about fighting inflation. This is great. Well, that's why gold's dumping. That's why the metals are dumping, okay? Because they're inflation hedges. But high growth is also dumping, which is a huge part of the NASDAQ and the Russell, which is why they're both in strong bear markets because they rely on cheap capital to be able to fund their business and as interest rates keep rising that capital becomes more expensive consumers get hit because now 
cost of borrowing money is more expensive. The Fed printing has all been spent, guys. All those checks that people's teenage kids got at, sent to their house, that parents got, deferments on payments on mortgages and things like that, that stockpile of money is gone and consumer credit debt exploded last month. So that's where we are right now. So when the Fed looks you in the eyes and tells you he loves you, just remember behind your back he's cheating on you because what he has to do to get the cost of business higher so that now everything else can pull back down, okay? So by raising these interest rates, the cost of business increases and now you have companies like Coinbase who had plans for this year, next year to triple its employment, triple. They announced yesterday they're not gonna be hiring anybody. You have other big companies laying people off. Amazon says they're on a hiring freeze. These other big companies are also doing this because again, the outlook for the consumer, the consumer drives the economy, the consumer has to spend money. The outlook looks really bad for the consumer. Rising prices, rising commodities, it costs more to heat your house, cool your house, fill the gas in your car, buy the food that you need to live, your rent's going up when your lease is up and you go to renew somewhere else. All of these things will hit the economy, but Powell looks you in the eyes and tells you he loves you and it's the strongest economy it's been in a long time. Just understand that inverse, what's actually underneath there, okay? So let's go ahead and look at Bitcoin. So we have our seven red candles, never happened before in Bitcoin's history. I went ahead and threw that trend-based FIB on here, guys, the FIB from the previous all-time high to that 28.8 up to the current all-time high and what that does is it gives you these levels that we have when we were initially hunting targets for this downward move in case we did keep descending and i still like the 23.082 between the 233 and the 200 if we did break below where we fell the 25 that would be the next likely target okay and if you lose that then you're looking at 20k here on gan but you can see all this stuff better on the smaller time frame so the daily Bitcoin doesn't look as bad as the equities do today. Um, you do have your down candle here on your daily, but you know, you had this nice bottom, nice euphoric rise up, and you never tried to break out of your Wyckoff trading range yet. So you don't have a failed breakout. So you're still just accumulating, okay? Now these are big candles. So let's look at a smaller time frame, going to the eight hour. Now the eight hour, a couple of things have changed. You have your base, you have your peak, you have your higher low, you have your higher peak and you had your higher low, but now you rolled over below your higher low. So you broke this three higher, the three rising valleys bullish structure. You had the 45 that you wanted to stay above. You broke that structure as well. So where you are now is essentially trading in this Wyckoff trading range. And you are in this upper quadrant. This 28 key seems to be a very key support level because you could see how you could come down. You want to be able to come back up and you're looking to attack the cloud. You haven't even attempted it yet. And again, the cloud gets thinner over here in these larger time frames, like May 27th, May 28th, out in this area but going to the four hour where we spent some time yesterday look i mean you're just now contacting the cloud and you weren't able to do anything and you just rolled over slightly from contacting it but here on the four hour time frame as you guys know you can see may 20th over the may 21st all the way out here well we don't have a cloud shadow here yet so to may 23rd this is this may 20th to may 23rd which isn't that far away. I mean, if you're going to make some progress on a lower time frame on here on the four hour, this looks to be a keen area to do it. Get up above your Wyckoff trading range and break out. Okay, so until then, you guys can literally see the accumulation. We went over this last video, so I won't repeat it completely. But this is what accumulation is. You find a bottom, which was your 25, 538 or whatever that is on your exchange, and you get some euphoric rise back up, and now you got people buying and selling, right? Down here is you calling your buddy, hey Joe, I can't believe Bitcoin's 25K. Everybody buys it, they think it's a great deal, and now you're just accumulating and price moves in waves, and you're hitting resistance, bumping your head, but the more orders you're filling, the more orders you're filling in this range, the weaker the resistance gets, and gives you an opportunity to break out up, a, up above that resistance and I'd be looking at that first target there at 34k does it have to happen no obviously if the markets keep dumping if they leg down if the Nasdaq takes another another nasty leg down all of this will pull down okay but where you are now is the market that we're trading and so this is the market that we're trading no particular trades here to even see you're just waving up and down maybe you could drill down to the smaller time frames one hour 30 minutes things like that you know start trying to scalp some of these candles but again i'm looking for these bigger macro movements for price to stack some money 
Guys, short video today because not a lot has happened, but I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Smash the like button, hit the subscribe button. Really appreciate all of your guys' support. And again, uh, if you want to pass the time, learn some new techniques, come see some of our live streams, definitely check out our trading room on Discord, that join button right below my video. Talk to you guys soon. Another video coming tomorrow. Take care, everybody.